Hey guys, welcome back to the Super Trade You channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be answering one of your questions. Basically, in a nutshell, the person is asking, are oils even necessary for airlocks? Let's get to it. So before we get into today's video, I'm going to ask you to hit that like button to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And you may be thinking, I don't even know what your channel is about. I don't know how you are as a content creator. If this is your first time watching, well, watch a little bit of the video. And then if you're starting to vibe with the content, hit the like button and subscribe so that you can get more of this awesome content. I will make you a believer. All right, let's get to today's question. So the question comes from Fro Love Angel. It reads, hello, what are your thoughts on using just shampoo and water? Do you think oils are necessary? And thanks for all your helpful tips. This is the best journey ever. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, Fro Love Angel. I appreciate you taking the time to leave a comment. I always appreciate when you guys take the time out of your schedules to just support me, encourage me, leave a comment, give your thoughts. It's always appreciated. I love engaging with you. All right, so what are my thoughts on using oils? Are they necessary? Well, the answer is kind of involved, so bear with me. Let's first discuss sebum. Sebum is secreted from our sebaceous glands, hence the name sebum. It's basically the substance that's composed of fatty acids, sugars, waxes, and other natural chemicals. The purpose of sebum is to protect the skin, and that includes our scalp, because our scalp is skin, from external factors, but it's also to protect against dehydration. So basically, it's trying to prevent your skin from drying out, and because the sebum comes in contact with your hair um, through the hair follicle, then yeah, it's also protecting your individual strands from dehydration as well because it's coating the strand. Now you might have wondered where are these sebaceous glands? There are two types of sebaceous glands, those that are attached to the hair follicles and then those that just exist independent of the follicles. But in short, basically wherever your hair grows, <laughs> there are sebaceous glands there. Okay, So if you're ever wondering, um, that's where they're at. The majority of them are on your face and of course on your head. Now, if you look at the diagram, you will see that you have the hair follicle, you will see the gland, the sebaceous gland, and then you'll see the sebum traveling through the duct. And the duct, the sebaceous duct, is what connects the sebaceous gland to the hair follicle. Remember I told you that the sebaceous glands, at least one type, is connected to hair follicles, okay? And so that's how it begins to coat your individual strands and even your skin. Now, you might have wondered if you've ever actually seen sebum. It seems to be this like invisible phantom thing, right, that you only hear about. But have you ever seen it? Well, I'm gonna tell you, yes, you have. Think about a newborn baby, a baby that has just been delivered. Have you guys ever paid attention to that white coating or casing that is all over the baby? That is called vernix caseosa, and basically it's a sebum mixed with cells from the fetus's skin. So you've definitely seen sebum before. <laughs> so now that I've spoken a little bit about sebum and sebaceous glands, and you now kind of understand the purpose of sebum, you know, it protects against dehydration, it slows down the rate of evaporation of moisture, uh, let's discuss whether or not what we naturally produce is enough. Whether or not we need to actually use oils that are not produced by our body. Well, in short, it depends on the individual. For example, some people have an oily scalp with dry hair, while other people have oily hair but maintain a dry scalp. These two <laughs> Um, situations exist for people, okay? So you, there's no rule. So you can't say whether or not oils are necessary. It definitely depends on the individual. And this is why I wholeheartedly believe in you figuring out what you need and doing that. So 
I guess, for all of Angel, to answer your question, whether or not oils are necessary, I think it just depends on the individual. For me, I feel like I can go months at a time without using oils, without applying oil to my scalp and hair. But at some point, my locks get dry enough where I'm like, okay, I want to... I want some external application of oil, uh, if for no other reason than to make them feel a bit softer and also so that they don't look dry. Now, I do know some people that don't use oil at all. I feel like I know of at least one person, I think she might have micro locks or sister locks. She was telling me that she didn't use any oil at all. I don't know if that's a part of that system or if she just herself chooses not to use any oils on her hair. Um, and I will say that when I looked at her locks, they didn't look especially dry, but maybe she's someone who has, you know, a sebum production that is enough for her set of locks. And maybe, you know, it spreads nicely and her hair doesn't dry out. Uh, it also could have something to do with how much water she drinks. Remember that the best way to have healthy hair is to treat it from the inside out. So obviously what you're drinking, what you're eating, like theoretically, your body should be able to give you everything that you need where your hair is concerned if you're healthy and if you're eating and drinking properly, right? So, you know, someone that thinks like that would say, yeah, you don't need anything outside of what you naturally produce. But there are many of us who, depending on our environment, if you live in an arid environment, and it's hot all the time, then hey, you may need to add a little moisture routine in the mix. It just depends. All right, so let me list some benefits of natural scalp oil. First, it revitalizes the hair. It seals in the moisture. That's a popular one. It protects the scalp from the weather and even insect bites, if you're outside maybe. It keeps the hair shining and it fights and it combats itchiness and dryness. A lot of people that use oils, those are the benefits that they derive from using their oil of choice. Now that I've listed out some benefits, let me give you an example of when it's probably not a good idea to use an oil. So if you have some sort of scalp condition like seborrheic dermatitis or eczema or psoriasis, then it would be a good idea to kind of hold off on oils until you have healed your scalp. The reason is, there could be abrasions to your scalp, and if you're applying oil, then believe it or not, you can actually develop an allergy to that oil. You can develop allergies that you never had because of the oil going into that damaged skin. So if you have any of those scalp conditions, then you want to you know, consult a trichologist, a dermatologist, someone that can advise you um, and maybe they will, you know, prescribe a medication or even an oil, but um, at least they will be doing so from an educated perspective, okay? So that's one situation where, yeah, it's probably advisable to hold off on oils. All right, for love, Angel, hopefully I have answered your question. I've definitely done so to the best of my ability from what I already knew and from the research that I have recently conducted, so... Once again, it just depends on your situation. Um, there are many benefits of using oil, but theoretically, if you are living an especially like clean and healthy life, then hey, maybe you don't even have to use outside oils. Me, I like to use oils every once and again. Um, they just, I don't know, feels like it rejuvenates my locks. So guys, I'm interested in knowing whether or not you use oil on your locks. Also, do you know of anyone who doesn't use oils whatsoever? I feel like a lot of free farmers probably don't use oils. Not all of them, but I think, I think I've heard of a few definitely not using any oils. You know, they just, I know some people that only do water washes <laughs> and um, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, I'm curious, do you use oils? If so, how often? And uh, would you ever consider never using an oil besides what is naturally produced? Drop down below in the comment section and let me know. As always, if you choose to love, do so unconditionally because loving with conditions conditions the heart to not really love at all. Sub is out.